27-year-old Penelope Pratt had been hiding from two men in a small Boronia suburb in Australia for quite a while before her luck ran out. On November 28, 2010, she called the Australian Emergency Line, begging the dispatcher to send the police to her hideout. While making the call, she hid in the bushes, away from the intruders. It was not the first time she had called for help that evening. Sadly, the emergency operator never transferred the call to the police. According to further investigation, the men were after her due to an alleged drug debt to the tune of about $160. They were later identified as John Potter and Aaron Gibson. The victim had a troubled childhood. She battled with learning disabilities, and once she started high school, she began experimenting with hardcore drugs like heroin. As an adult, Pratt had two young children, who she did not have custody of when she was murdered. After her father died in 2009, she was left over 100,000 Australian dollars, but instead of using it to catapult a new life, Pratt spent the money irresponsibly, and it was eventually wasted away. A year later, her partner overdosed on drugs and died, which led to her spending time with James Potter and Aaron Gibson, drug addicts who often took amphetamines. In November of that same year, she called triple zero and was placed in the psychiatric ward and could leave whenever she was ready. Potter and Gibson went looking for Pratt, and when they couldn't find her at home, they were told she was at the hospital. It was almost 11 p.m., and the men went to see her, but the receptionist would not let them in. This made Potter furious. He began swearing and was forceful with a security guard called to calm him down. He then lied to the guard and said Pratt was his sister and had clothes for her. Security then called Pratt and put her on the phone with Potter. She made the fatal mistake of leaving the hospital with the men when Potter told her he had some money to give her. The trio drove to Potter's girlfriend's house in Baronia, but the 27-year-old quickly left. Shortly after, Triple Zero received a call from Pratt in which she told the operator she had been picked up from the hospital by people drunk driving and said she wanted to go back as she would cop a beating. The dispatcher tried to find her location, but the caller repeatedly said she just wanted her money before eventually hanging up on the operator. Ten minutes later, Pratt called again, the final call they would receive from her. Hello, where do you need police? Penny, there's... 
In a bid to save herself from imminent danger, Pratt had been trying to describe her location to the emergency operator. However, she couldn't as the dispatcher ended the call while she was still talking, which ultimately led to her brutal death. It's alleged that she began fighting with Gibson outside not long after. The feud continued, with Pratt demanding her money. At some point, Gibson violently grabbed the victim's hair, pointed a 22 caliber sawed-off rifle at her face, and shot her in the jaw. She began pleading for her life, and Gibson put her in a chair and shot her in the left side of her head. Potter helped Gibson drag her to a bath, and he took the gun and shot her in the right eye. The coroner's report said Gibson told Potter to finish the job. He got a large kitchen knife, stabbed her in the heart several times, and cut her throat. The gruesome murder continued until she was wrapped up in a living room rug and placed in a car boot that belonged to Krelikomp, the man who saw Pratt trying to flee the house earlier that night. Pratt's body was found three weeks after the murder in the Dandenong Ranges National Park, Olinda. The police were only able to get to the bottom of the case after an alleged accomplice, 48-year-old Adrian Krelikom, wrote and handed over a 15-page statement to the authorities, implicating the other accomplices. Krelikom stated that although he didn't have a hand in the murder, he had helped the killers, 24-year-old Potter and 31-year-old Gibson, hide Pratt's body in his car. Together, the three drove to a brushland, where they dumped the body. Krelikop was later charged with being an accomplice to murder and possessing amphetamines and cannabis. He was, however, released on bail after the role he played in bringing the killers to book was duly considered. Potter and Gibson, on the other hand, were charged with murder. According to the Sydney Morning Herald, Potter and Gibson were sentenced to 24 and 22 years in prison, respectively. The emergency operator who refused to transfer Pratt's call to the police was also disciplined and barred from receiving emergency calls. It seemed like justice was served since Pratt's murderers were eventually caught and sent to prison. However, outside the courthouse, the victim's aunt, Susan Clear, said she wished the killers had been given the death penalty instead since they had also taken her niece's life. Watch this episode next if you found this story interesting. Until then, please like and subscribe if you want to support my channel.